call this workshop to order. Council, you have before you a copy of tonight's agenda. Uh, there's two items on there for t as topics tonight. I would uh, entertain a motion to adopt the agenda at this time. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? First item is the commercial garbage collection. Richard, I'll let you lead into that. Mr. Members of Council, tonight I'd like to have Carrie and Wally walk you through some analysis that we've been conducting relative to commercial garbage. At the end, we're going to be asking you to provide us some guidance as to the future. We'll get to that, though, at the end of the program. Carrie, Wally, if y'all would, please. Mayor Phillips, Council, thank you very much for letting us come here tonight to talk to you about the commercial garbage collection service. A little background information, uh, since the middle of the 1980s, the city of Jacksonville has been contracting out the commercial dumpster service program that we have. Our current provider is waste management. This is the final year of the contract for the waste management and it terminates June of 2014. <laughs> Council has instructed us to look at possibly taking over this commercial dumpster service program. Presently, the program has 830 customers and we service over 1,121 dumpsters. Um, right now, for an eight-yard dumpster, the service level is uh, $155 per month. That's twice a week service. Uh, for a two-yard dumpster, you're looking at about $75 a month. That's the standard basic service that we have. Some of the options that we have or the council needs to look at is, number one, the contract. We can contract this service out as we've done before. The other is that we can contract this service out as we've done before with the city bidding on this contract with the other contractors. The third option is that we can simply just take over this program and do this program ourselves with our, with our municipal crews. And the fourth is free market. And by free market, we mean simply letting the individual businesses go out and obtain the individual or the vendor that they want to service their contract and, and get any type of service level they want. When I say any type of service level, I mean once a week, twice a week, three times a week, four times a week, Saturday service or Sunday service or whatever. Uh, the contract method, how we do it and we're presently doing it, is we bid out the, the refuse collection and the recycling collection. In this process from our present contract, the city of Jacksonville collects the commercial fees. By commercial fees, I'm talking about the disposal cost and also the commercial dumpster service fee that we charge the commercial customers for the collection. And that collection fee is what we pay waste management for the services. Uh, the city monitors this contract. By monitoring, I mean we receive the complaints and we relay these, this information to the, the vendor in order for them to correct <coughs> what complaint that may materialize. Uh, we coordinate services. By coordinating services, the, the commercial routes are already established. What we do is any customer that wants additional service we make sure that additional service is given. Any blocks or misses, we notify the commercial customer so that, that can be corrected so that service can be as smooth as possible. Uh, our current service is from Monday through Fridays. We don't do any Saturday and we don't do any Sunday services. Uh, the pros and cons to the contract method, uh, first is competitive bidding. Uh, we feel that by going out and competitively bidding this, that we can get the business customers the best possible price for the service that they want. Uh, it's minimum overhead for the city. The city doesn't, per se, exercise any expense over the contract. It's, it's typically an enterprise fund where the funds that we get in from the disposal and for the collection costs, we pay out for the disposal and the collection costs. Uh, group purchase, I think one of the advantages of, of how we do this contract is that the contractor or the vendor gets bulk customers. They get customers that are centrally located uh, and it's, a, it's, it's easy for them as far as the collection process is concerned and it's, it's more beneficial as far as economics is concerned for the customer. The cons, uh, we don't have a lot of control over quality and by that I mean a lot of what we do as far as asking for quality is concerned is we have to depend on the contractor to make sure that the quality and the level of service is, is, is good. Sometimes there are some glitches in that that we can't control that, that happens, but we try to make sure that it, it, it gets serviced and gets taken care of. Difficulty in control in response to complaints. Uh, our contract states that we have, or waste management has 24 hours to respond to a complaint or the customer has in order to, to correct that complaint. 
sometimes we're not doing that on a on a regular basis, and the follow up process helps re re help take care of that. But sometimes it's not as timely as it should be with the commercial customer. And recycling is a challenge. We we recycle uh, once a week on the commercial end of it, and sometimes, uh, like anything else, even with the residential, when we don't get there in time or don't do some of the things that we're supposed to do in time, people very quickly become disinterested in recycling. Uh, it, it has to be a process that's that's easy for the customer, easy for the customer to remember, and on the on the contractors end, there has to be a commitment to make sure that that stuff that collection gets taken care of. City service method. Well, the city service method is simply we take over the program. Uh, we provide the specialized equipment and we hire the employees to do the whole nine yards, the program, the, the dumpster collection service, the recycling collection service. And, and that gives us, I think, greater control over how we do things and the quality of how we do things. Um, I think we're better able to meet the customer's needs, um, improve recycling service because we, we we do make a commitment to make sure that we get the recycling and so forth taken care of and that's a uh, and that's an important thing for the city as far as expenses are concerned, reducing the expenses that we have. Um, the bid method. Uh, the bid method we can well, let's look at the cons. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The cons. The cons is the, the cost of the initial purchase for specialized equipment. We're looking at purchasing front-end trucks. Uh, we're looking at also um, purchasing a truck that can help move those dumpsters around because we do have or will have, if we take over this program, recycling containers that we may have to give out to customers or take back from customers and so forth. So we need that uh, to help us move that along. Um, the bid method. Uh, the bid method, we can send it out for bid as we would traditionally do now, but have the city bid on this process also. Um, and the council would have the, the benefit of selecting the best option that they would like to have as far as this, this bid option is concerned. Uh, the pros to that is that it, it is still a competitive bid. And the second is that the council, again, can choose the best process or the best vendor or the best price they need or want for this particular program. The cons to this is, and we're assuming this, that we're assuming that some contractors, knowing that the city will bid on this contract, will not bid. Uh, they, they may not feel that they can give a competitive bid in order to get this contract. And then again, the cons is the control over the quality of the service that we have, depending upon who gets the contract. Um, free market. Okay, uh, free market is simply this, as we mentioned before in our, our, our choices or our options that the council will have, is simply open this up for free enterprise. Uh, the business can choose whomever they want to come in and handle their dumpster collection service, uh, whether it's uh, local businesses or businesses from the outside, and they can choose the level of service that they want. Uh, their interaction would be strictly with the contractor or the vendor that they choose to go ahead and, and take care of this service. Um, what are some of the, the pros to this method? Uh, the pr pros first is that the city has no no uh, tie-in into this. Uh, no resources are required. city does not deal with complaints that we get from the commercial customers. Um, and the cost is determined by the marketplace. Uh, the cons is that there's there will be no no assistance to the commercial customer. Uh, in some instances now, you know, the city has the option of going out and helping some of the customers. Sometimes when we're faced with a situation where uh, you know a recycling container does not get emptied or get dumped, or we have a, a dumpster that's overloaded and can't be dumped or too heavy to dump, we sort of take the initiative to go out and get that taken care of so that waste management can come in and, and dump those containers. Let me ask you a quick question, Kerry. I don't mean to interrupt you. You're on the roll. <clears throat> on the recycling, with the state law as it is for the ABC recycling, who does that? Okay. Uh, part of that is done by waste management through our contract for the, for the bigger commercial businesses. And we have ourselves, we have about five 
small businesses that we take care of ourselves. Okay. Right. Um, again, the the cons to the free market method uh, cost is determined by the marketplace. It could be lower or it could be higher than what the present present business people are paying right now. Um, recycling is not guaranteed. Uh, when we leave this up to another vendor to do this, uh, my assumption is that the cost of recycling will probably get higher. It's required by the state to do this, so they would sort of be at the mercy of the price of the contractor. Um, more expensive, again, because of the marketplace. It could be more expensive. Uh, vendors will not get a total, total market like they do now from <coughs> the business customers they may it may be piecemeal so some business customers may not get the price that they would get if we got all the city's customers of, together um, and again one big thing is there there's going to be no assistance from the city as far as any efforts to to take care of misses or blocks or, or dumpsters that have been uh, overflowing with uh, with refuge um, you mean take it? Yes. As as Kerry mentioned, as part of the budget process, council asked staff to look at the feasibility of the city actually providing commercial refuse collection. Um, we have looked at it, and basically, right now, Kerry kind of touched on this, but the fee covers two primary things: it covers the disposal costs at the landfill, and the other is it covers the cost to actually collect the garbage tip the dumpsters and also the the recycling so in our analysis what we did is we said that basically the disposal cost of the landfill is there regardless whether the city provides it in-house or whether we contract somebody to provide it that cost is there so what we looked at is waste management's um, contract for fiscal year 13 was right at about seven hundred thousand dollars so for the city to provide the service, we would be looking at about $700,000 in revenue. Um, Carrie mentioned that we would need specialized equipment. We cannot perform the service with the type of equipment we have. Um, we would need about five um, front loading refuse collection vehicles. We would need additional personnel. We would need, we've estimated that at, at seven personnel, you can see four drivers and three support. And we also looked at the operations maintenance. Um, you know, we, we did our best to estimate fuel costs. Um, I'm not sure we're as good as you are. Maybe you could help us <laughs> forecast some. But, um, you know, we, we looked at um, what we'd anticipate in insurance cost. Um, one of the things that we, we did a, our best guess at is um, liability and claims to dumpster enclosures and um, containers you know those are those kind of things happen um, and as an example that we had problems with the city hall enclosure it's a brick enclosure and something happened um, when our dumpster was being picked up and uh, broke one of the gates off and broke some of the bricks so that's something that we turned over to waste <coughs> management's insurance company so those type of things we've tried to estimate and generally what we found is with all of the upfront cost and the additional staffing and our uh, estimation of operation maintenance costs, the cost would be somewhere around seven to seven hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. So, if you compare what we've paid at seven hundred thousand dollars, or what we, our revenue is at seven hundred thousand dollars, which is what we've paid waste management, we're fairly close to that number providing that service uh, in-house. Mr. Fittner has a question. In your estimate of that cost, have you included the the amortization of the debt for purchase of what? Million dollars, million two fifty of garbage truck equipment? It, it was, uh, we actually looked at using, uh, uh, to save on the upfront cost, we looked at purchasing used vehicles and Ed actually found us five used vehicles um, I think the oldest was about a 2009 vehicle the newest was a 2012 or 13 um, but that saved it was about um, nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars or so and it was 
it was capitalized. Um, five years at 4%, I believe, is what we used. Well, we thought uh, if, if we are going to get into this business, we want to set up from the very beginning what we'll call a life cycle approach. We do not want to start with five brand new trucks. One reason is the cost, but the other is you don't want them all to be worn out at the same time. <clears throat> so Ed went out into the marketplace, and these are not trucks that he's buying from or would be purchased from other cities or counties. These are trucks that are available through the vendors who will lease them for special events, or if someone is, is going out of a business, they lost a contract, and they've turned the truck back in. So the concept there would be that we would buy five front loaders, four for the front service and one is a backup truck. And we would capitalize it, as you said, over five years. But Wally, keep sure. going. Sure. Um, so we got a question here. Um, yes, sir. Just a couple questions. The pass-through monies that we pay now, the 700000 to waste management, do we have any profit built in or are we just 100% pass-through? Yes, sir. So we incur the admin fees. Yes, sir. And we don't pass that on. So yes, it's sir. a washout right now. Yes, sir. Um, then the other question is, is the dumpsters themselves. Currently, the businesses, although we pay the city of Jacksonville for the service, we also have a bill to the, to the waste management or industries for a dumpster. Would we continue to get the dumpster for, from these sources, or would the city now have the capability of renting these dumpsters because I see that as another source of potential revenue uh, twofold it could be a revenue source for the city but also it could be a, a debt service for the businesses now that they've lost that businesses with those you know would those containers now start to rise for the business people because it's a monopoly uh, under, under our analysis we actually <coughs> looked at um, the business owners contracting out the um, dumpsters themselves. Now we would supply the recycling dumpsters, but we identified that as uh, an opportunity in the future. And in talking with Carrie, um, what we found is that many of those actually have a contract where they're on a, a contract period. So in the future, we could start phasing those and we may not have to go all in at once we could start phasing those in um, now we'll say in our analysis one of the advantages is we did identify that we would need a specialized vehicle to deliver the recycling the recycling dumpsters so that same vehicle could be used if we decided to actually take on not only the entire service but getting to leasing the dumpsters or it or included it in the base fee um, depending on what council would decide to do so we identified it as a, as a future opportunity. So but when you say that we have recycling containers now, we don't have commercial recycling containers. We do have some. Not many, because I haven't been able to get one. I think we have 47. Okay, are you, so, excuse well. me, sir, are you, are you talking about the commercial dumpsters for recycling? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, we have 47 customers that, are, that have commercial dumpsters for recycling, and we have around 170 customers that we use to roll out containers for. Okay, the reason I ask is I've been trying to get one, and it's not about me, but we're talking about, and I've got four or five of those blue cans that are annoying, and I probably have more recycling than five other businesses because we're all paper. Um, one of the challenges that we've had with our current vendor, Waste Management, and they've given reasonably good service, but we have not been able to get them into the recycling the way that the contract says that they should be. So if we proceed with uh, sending this out for bids, we can certainly tell you that one of the criteria we're going to look at is going to be their proposed recycling program. Uh, waste management has not done a good job when it comes to helping us with recycling. These numbers have set the recyc I'm sorry, these numbers have set the container aside as a separate issue. Because as Mr. Lazaro said, whether we're in the business or whether there is a private vendor who's supplying it, there are various ways. There are some customers who actually own their own containers. There are others who rent them. There are some who rent them from waste management and are serviced by waste management. There are others who rent them from waste disposal or someone like that 
and her service about waste management. So for this, we are strictly looking at the revenue expenditure comparison of the service of picking up and emptying. But that is a, a revenue stream we could look at in the I don't, future. I, I think I've missed something here. Mm -hmm. As far as the dumpsters are concerned, right now, uh, waste management or whoever's leasing these, these containers to these businesses is offsetting their cost of these containers by getting some type of rental fee, right? That is correct. Yes. Now, how are we going to how are we going to offset that if we were to adopt this approach? Okay. The way you would do it, <clears throat> and let me answer your question a little differently, Mayor. Currently, if you are a customer in the city, let's say that you're, um, let's say a pizza place, for example, you actually get two bills. You get one bill from the city for the service, and we pass that through to waste management for the service whomever you're renting your dumpster from will send you a direct bill. So that is a second cost to that service that that restaurant, in this case the pizza place, would have. In the options that we're looking at, the contract would be for service only. You would still be able to get your rental or you could purchase it. If the city went into the business, again, we would either provide the service or if council wanted to, we could also own a number of the <coughs> containers themselves and lease them out on a monthly basis. I will tell you, many businesses prefer to have them leased for this reason. They don't have to worry about the maintenance. If it rusts, they all they call and say, I need a new dumpster, you send it. If the top gets broken, they simply call, say send a new dumpster and you send it. There are a few <coughs> who own, but most of them lease even under our current arrangement. Seems to me that that would be a strong revenue stream to offset. Most, I will say to you, Mr. Lazaro, most cities who are in this business are fully in the business. So. And they also set their rate structures up where you don't, you don't get a bill for service and a bill for container. You get a bill. I think about your residential service. We absorb the cost of the 96 gallon container in our budget. So, you know, if you were going to do this, there are two ways. One is strictly service, the other is service and container. The containers are not in this analysis. Mr. Bedford, yeah. question. <clears throat> two questions. Maybe you just answered it. Most of the cities in Carolina, Eastern Carolina, or into the commercial as well as the regular residential garbage pickup? No, sir. They're not? Uh, okay. No, sir. There, there are some <coughs> municipalities that, that handle the, the collection service themselves, and there's some that contract it out. Okay. Um, we've got, um, for instance, uh, Greensboro, Goldsboro, and Kernansville, they handle the, the collection stuff themselves. Where Jacksonville and, and the city of New Bern, they contract it out. And the city of New Bern does basically like we do, where they contract it out and they bill the customer through the, the water bill department and so forth. Is there an advantage to the city in terms of fuel tax, sales yes. tax, and so on? Yes. There are. Is that considerable in terms of the operating cost? <coughs> I don't know that I'd use the term considerable. Uh, it, it is a savings that we have uh, that we don't show in this analysis. Uh, okay. Go to the next slide a second, if you sure. don't mind. Uh, there are two other things when you look at the consideration, and we are we're we're not selling here one way or the other. We're just trying to show you data. One of the things that we currently do not get out of uh, waste management is any service beyond five days a week, Monday through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If you think of being a restaurant, you don't need your, your cans picked up as bad on Tuesday morning as you do, do on Saturday morning or Sunday morning. They're currently paying that extra fee directly to waste management for that service. So it's a little, it's a little bit of a misnomer to say that our retail and restaurant establishments are getting their full service through the contract we currently have. If you want it picked up on Saturday, which many restaurants want, they pay a premium price for that and we don't bill it, waste management does. That's another point that we would make is that 
if we are in this business, there are additional ways that we can make money as far as expanding service to Saturday and Sunday. Uh, also, after five years, the vehicle cost will significantly reduce. Why is that? We would anticipate the typical life of a commercial garbage truck to be somewhere between eight and 10 years. You're not gonna get 15 years out of them, but you will get eight to 10 years out of them. A Saturday or a Sunday pickup, you just raised a question in my mind that I have to close. What? The landfill's closed, so what do they do? Hold that garbage over the weekend? I'm not sure what they do with it. Does you? Do the truck, anyway. Yes, sir. Now, landfill isn't closed on Saturday. So it's open on Saturday? Yes, sir, it is. Okay. Yes, sir. Mr. Missouri, you had a question. Yeah, I think <clears throat> just to tie in with what Dr. Woodruff was saying, those are called additional dumps. Any additional dumps get built separately. And most most restaurants would have additional dumps because the standard dumps are not sufficient. So that's another cost that's added to uh, most buildings. If we, uh, I don't know exactly where I stand on this. I'm, I don't believe I'm in favor of the free market approach. I think it could cause a lot of problems in small vendor, small vendors taking on contracts and so on. But uh, what would the what consideration would we give to the possibility of a survey of users, the commercial commercial accounts, in terms of exploring some of these considerations to them and see what see what what their feelings are, what directions they think the city ought to be approaching? We can certainly do that. Uh, you know, one of the I think the uh, the questions that we put in there are important relative to how many of them are satisfied with the current service. You know, it, it's never a good idea to ask a person, are you satisfied with the fee you're paying? Because the answer is always going to be, yes, I am. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's a Clemson answer, not an NC State answer. He just said that to make sure we're paying yeah. attention. <laughs> Uh, on the other hand, if you ask questions such as how many of them are actually getting, having to pay for extra dumps, that's something we don't know because we don't bill it. But we can certainly put out a survey. We know who the customers are and we can get additional data. And I'm only speaking for myself, but I think there's a great deal of convenience to have one service, one bill, one phone to call for an issue. Uh, as long as it's competitive and so not you'll monopolized. St <coughs> we'll still get the calls, but that's beside the point. <laughs> well, well, we would be getting the call. Mm -hmm. I guess my point is it'd be nice to have one one bill and, you know, one entity to call if you have an issue. Because now if you have an issue with the dumpster, you got to call Waste Management. If you have an issue with a dump, you call the city. Mm -hmm. And it's then you get two bills and, again, two Maybe. stamps if you're sending out two checks or two bill <laughs> pays if you're sending out two bill pays. Many years ago, the city bid, put out the bid, I think the residential uh, garbage collection, and the city was one of the bidders. And we decided to stay with the city, but uh, I, the reason I bring that up is I think if we were to approach that, to put it out the bid with the city being one of the bidders, I don't think that would dissuade other vendors from bidding. We don't. I mean, well, why do you think that that would dissuade competition? We don't actually know that it would. We were simply pointing out that if someone thinks that we've already made that decision and that they're bidding against the city, if you pardon the expression, it's already a stacked deck against them, but they may decide not to bid. Now, we don't know that for sure. Uh, what we know right now is that there are at least three companies, waste management being one, and we have two others that have told us that they are waiting with great anticipation to receive the uh, specifications. One of the important things, and the reason why we're discussing this now, is we are certainly nine months away from the end of the current contract. But if waste management does not get the renewed contract, whomever gets it, whether it's the city, whether it's ABC disposal, somebody, 
they're going to have to put in place the necessary equipment. This equipment isn't sitting on the Ford lot. You know, it's going to have to be ordered. They're going to have to search for it just as we had to search for it. So there is the lead time that is, that is needed for this. I would also say to you that uh, if the city gets into this, I would tell you the number one reason you're getting into it is to control the quality of the service. This would be set up as a fiduciary fund, strictly an enterprise fund. It would not be subsidized by the tax dollar. The rates that we would show you would be rates that will fully offset the cost. This would not, unless you direct otherwise, this would not become an ad valorem tax fund, a funded uh, program. The number one reason for getting into it is quality of service. Now, beyond that, uh, you know, you, what we're asking for this evening is, is some guidance from you as to how you feel you would like for us to proceed. We are prepared literally within the next two weeks to submit the specs out for bids. So again, your options are, you know, number one, send it on out to bids and see what the prices come in. Number two is to make a decision that the, you're going to authorize the city staff to be a bidder in that. In doing that, we would break it up very clearly so that the analysis of the, of the bids is done in the finance department and that the work necessary to prepare our own bid would be done by the public works sanitation folks so that there is no crossing. You know, our bid would be submitted sealed just like everybody else bid and we would have to bid on that. Um, and then, of course, the other is just to make a decision that the city is going to fully get into the business and not bid. And the last option is the one Mr. Bittner spoke cautiously about, and that was let the free market do it and us just simply say to the commercial folks, you hire whomever you want. If you can get a better deal with this company than this company, it's up to you to do. All right, we got 11 minutes left before meeting time, and you have another, you have some high dollar help that's here to talk about the 800 megahertz system. We'll give this to you for um, food for thought, and then we can get back with you. Is maybe that fair? you can also supply us with a little bit more of a financial analysis of, yes. uh, of this. I, I think there was some numbers that are kind of unclear. Well, the one thing, not to belabor this, if we're going to bid it, we don't want to give, because it becomes public record, we don't want to give you too much of our financial analysis, right. but we will give you uh, more information. I, more I, information, yes. Sir. I'm curious where we derive the authority to even be deciding how people track. I mean, I understand the residents, that that's our responsibility, but is there some... Well, there's two things I, I'd point out, but let me address yours. It's a, it's a non-exclusive franchise. We can't require Mr. Lazaro's companies to use our, the service, but by bidding it out like this, the rate is so much less than what they can get on the free market. That's why they select it. But, it, but if they balk and say, no, I want to go with XYZ company. The other point I want to make is the reason that we're allowed to engage in the bidding is because it's a service contract. It doesn't have to be bid out at all. Service contracts don't have to be bid out. So you say, the, the point being that if you do it that way and you have XYZ commercial um, vendors and the city, you want there to be the arm's length transaction because you want good, honest numbers from your city finance folks and, and Kerry and Wally and so forth yeah. so that there's no, uh, again, it's, you'll be able to look at good numbers. You don't want a stacked deck, as Richard said. But that's the reason you can do it that way. You couldn't do most contracts that's this way. It is a service contract, and that's the reason you can approach it like this. And Mr. Bittner reiterates this has been done in the past, apparently, few, uh, several years ago. So we don't hold a monopoly on that service. No, no sir. No, sir, we don't. I get out there anytime we want. Okay. We'll move real quickly, and we'll get you this additional information. Good job, Josh. Appreciate it. Uh, 800 megahertz. Uh, we have uh, the chief and a gentleman who has come out of retirement specifically oh. for this evening. Like Mr. I said, high dollar help. East Carolina. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. Good to see I you. I ain't gone anywhere. Okay. We'll run through this very quickly, please. And we'll go through this pretty quickly. We uh, briefed this to the county a couple, of few weeks ago or a month or two ago now because they wanted to brief it on all their contracts that they have for construction. 
fast that we'd be able to give you all the same thing. You see who Motorola got the contract, the total amount, city and county together, a little over $12 million. The only part that we're reimbursing or participating in on that is the infrastructure, the $8 million, which really comes out to be total $9 million and something. That's because we had to put in some contingencies for site preparation, running electric, running gas, some things like that might happen. So the $9 million is what? The other four million there you see is for radios and all. That had to be put into the bid, but that's a split up by every municipality and city, county, everybody. Nobody's obligated. I think we're obligated for 500, 300 and some radios out of that, which we're already buying. It is a collaborative partnership with Onslow County. It will become a collaborative partnership with every municipality in the county as the maintenance comes due. Including including Lenore and Jones. We're working now, the county managers of Lenore and Jones and Onslow County are working together. We've already, the Com Board, Communications Board has given them a, what we think they should pay us if they come on ours and use our infrastructure. So it will become, and it will give us more of a footprint throughout the, this area. We're gonna be building three 300 foot towers and 10,000 foot compounds one in Parker Town, one at Dixon Clearwell, and one out at on the land application, which I'll give permission there. And in, in using the two existing. The, well, I said building three. Right. Then we're using two more. It's five sites. We're using the Richlands and the Commons Tower that are already built in there. Uh, you see the dates right now. We give a notice to proceed. We hope to finish up the contract design review by the October 2013, which is this month. We have an on-site meeting tomorrow, and we hope to sign that off, and so we can then in December we'll go to testing and then start. The sites are already being worked. We've already pulled permits and done a lot of other things already. And then you see the rest of the schedule. Hopefully we'll be right along with the new public safety building and moving in that. Onslow and, like I said, are working together on this. Uh, Norm Bryson, the emergency management manager, director, and myself are the two project managers. They'll all be simulcast, it'll all be digital. Uh, we'll have one band for everybody, the sheriff, the airport, rescue, everybody will be on it. And it'll be divided. Also, it lets us meet our requirements that by the FCC that we had to narrow band all VHF radios by January of this year. We got a uh, permission not to do that while we're doing this, and we won't have to narrow band at all. We'll just get rid of the VHF. Let, let me mention three things. First, first, part of the system and part of the way the reason that we have so many towers is the need for a redundant system. Currently, what happens is if our radio system goes down, everybody operates on one frequency. We have an emergency transmitter, and that that happens. This particular system will be much more redundant. So we'll have actually two controller units. So if for some reason hurricane comes through and hits one of the towers or, or one of the stations, because the way the towers are, are situated and the way they are, are, it'll be a redundant system. So we'll have full capabilities. Um, the, the, next the next slide. The, next. The, the other thing is that this is really like a semi-private system. So um, the city will be talking to the county, and we're also working with, with Camp Lejeune. Camp Lejeune at this time is, is buying a radio system, and we have had some discussions with them on how we are going to interoperate with them as well. Um, there are some challenges that we're trying to meet with Camp Lejeune because they have an encoded system, and, uh, which is a much more expensive system than the system we're purchasing. But there are ways that we're going to be able to have some interoperability. So if, if something happens on the base or something happens in the city and their emergency services are responding or backing us up, we're going to have interoperable communications. So that's something that we've been working on as well. Our system is also can be encoded, encrypted. We do have some encryption we did buy, but not all of it because we only needed it for some of the, in the police. One of the other things that you'll see here, it's going to let the small municipalities have their own dispatch channel. The county will still do their dispatch, 
but they'll be able to talk with them. They won't have to mix it with the sheriff, which will give those customers better service. And he talked about a second master site. One of the master sites will be at EOC. The second master site will be in the public safety, and that'll be collect connected by fiber. Here's the a rendering of what we're going to have, and you see, and I named the locations of Richlands, Merle Brown, which is ours, or the one on Land App, it's still run by the county there once it's the go. And then uh, Dixon Clearwell, Parkertown out by Swansboro. And then also we're putting another link up on top of the Justice Department that's been cleared that'll be going to Merle Brown that'll give us some more redundancy. And then as you see over on the other side, we'll have fiber between the Justice Department, I mean the Public Safety Complex, back to the EOC. So we'll have it really connected, really redundant. At the EOC, we're going not only with the generator is going to be uh, propane, but it's going to be natural gas, natural gas too. So it'll switch back and forth. It's dual. So if something happens and we can't get, re, you know, knocks out the natural gas, we'll be able to stay on the propane. But that reduced the price by doing that because then we didn't have to have more land than 2,000 gal two 2,000 gallon tanks out there. So we're able. I think one of the important things about the way that, that we've designed this system is first is the redundancy. The second is the in-building coverage and the ability for portable radios to reach. Even in this building with our current system, because we basically have one tower that we're transmitting to, we do have some challenges every, every so often. So one of the things that we did, especially both in, in the city and, and within Camp Lejeune, was to make sure that the critical buildings have have coverage so that portable radio coverage in stairwells, portable radio co coverage inside the inner parts of the building, say the hospital or the mall or any of the schools, have have that ability to transmit. And that's part of the contract to make sure that we have a good system so that when a firefighter or a police officer keys their mic, they're able to talk to whoever they need to talk to. So those were the two things that that really guided the design of the system, making sure there was redundance because of the, the uh, susceptibility that we have to hurricanes, <clears throat> and two is making sure that we have good coverage everywhere inside the, inside the city, including, including that on uh, uh, Camp Lejeune. And last thing, we've, since we've gone through the uh, contract design review, we've had two change orders one of them is a zero balance change order. The tower at DOC, being a tower that was built 12, 14 years ago, has to be upgraded, modified to accept the weight we're putting on it. We were able to negotiate that out with Motorola and that's doing, being done for zero cost to us. Was 55,000 until I went around and bid it to some other companies and they decided they could do it for, for that. And so it's a zero cost change order. And the last one, was to do some upgrades and all come in at four thousand dollars and then it was no cost to the city in that so on the, in the last slide talks about the center for public safety because part of the dependence on this system is uh, is us being able to get into the public safety center um, on time so it appears that we're going to be right on schedule so that as soon as we open the uh, the center for public safety we'll also incorporate a new radio system with that opening, so we're 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 close to having that that along those same lines. Yeah, and that's a little bit more com cost, sir. What's our final figure in terms of sharing of the cost with the county? Ours is th that nine million will be thirty percent, so it's a little over three million, somewhere around three million. And one of the things is not only a new radio system going in the public safety building, but the whole dispatch center will be new and upgraded and modern it and I think y'all been briefed on some other so it's all got to fit together and work together so we're working very close with ITS and the chief and everybody to make sure that happens all together is this a fully digital system now? yes it's fully digital most of it's gone IP based now internet protocol the same as the rest of the dispatch center and the call taking side of the house and part, part of that is our challenge with Camp Lejeune because they're going to the same kind of system. Yep. So that, that so ability. So the interoperability is going to be there for, with the base, with the county? You know, the, you know, the really the good. Highway Patrol. The, actually, yes. the Highway Patrol, yes. too. The state as well with their, <clears throat> with their Viper system. We, so we'll have interoperability with Highway Patrol and 
um, SBI, ALE, all those others. We did an extensive analysis of looking at Viper with the Highway Patrol. One of the reasons we didn't go with Viper is number one, they don't have enough IDs to issue, so there's a hold up there. But number two, they don't have any in building coverage. They build it for the Highway Patrol. Highway Patrol rides roads and they don't talk in buildings. So after we had them to come down and give us briefings, we decided not to. Well, now we're kind of glad we did because they're having to spend a lot of money to try to upgrade their system and bring it up because they don't have enough IDs to issue to people. But when the, when the system is fully operational, Camp Lejeune's is about <laughs> on the same course. We'll have, uh, we'll have better interoperability now. We, we do have some interoperability. We've linked two frequencies, one police, one fire, with them so that we can communicate. Once these systems come online, we'll have a better interoperability because we'll be able to uh, virtually communicate more seamlessly, especially inside the city. And the county will have the same thing going to, because a lot of the Jones and out in Hargett's Crossroads, the EMS service and all is done by different ones. They'll be able to communicate back and forth across those lines and will not interfere with, because we're making enough capacity in here is not going to be a problem putting somebody else on. Also, we're also in some talks with Han New Hanover County about them building a tower right down on the border of Pender County. We'll be able to connect ours and be able to talk all the way through there. Well, appreciate that update tonight. Uh, I'm, you're not looking for any kind of action. No, sir. This is just for your information. So has anybody got anything else? Thank Dr. Woodruff, do you have anything in closing? No, sir. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, nice job, man. Uh, entertain a motion. Sure. Okay. That's good. All in favor? All right. All right.